everyone, it's Jake at Jake's Metal Chat. Hope you're all well and welcome to episode 32 of My Metal Vault, where I will be exploring and showing you my favourite albums within heavy metal, thrash metal, death metal, black metal, doom metal, sludge metal, folk metal, you name it, all of that excellent stuff. As well as chatting about the album, I will be also talking about the band themselves. Now... I have here one hell of an album here. A excellent band. Got to see him four years ago at Filmfest in London. And absolutely incredible. Never heard of him before. The name might have floated around somewhere, but to be honest, didn't know about them until I actually went and saw them live. All the way from Finland. Not going to try and announce the place that they're from in Finland, but they are considered one of the pioneers of funeral doom metal. And the band that I'm talking about is Skepticism. This band's been around since 1991. They've been making this music for 33 years, and this album is a testament to that and they're still doing it now but it all started with their debut from 1995 storm grow fleet and whew, this album there's a lot to say about this album and before i do let's get that artwork out of the booklet but we'll show the back i'll show that in a minute a little bit of artwork here. And I think it also you know goes straight into the next one. I don't think so, but there's the back, here's the band themselves. Very dark, ominous band photo. Fits the music very well. And of course, the lyrics to the songs themselves. Now, this is not an original pressing like the last episode with Sacramentum. This is a re-release from Shrot Records. The disc looks really, really cool. And no, there's nothing behind the disc, no other piece of artwork or anything. And of course, is the back of the album. And the Shrot record label down below i cannot remember who released this album originally uh red stream inc incorporated records now this song only has this album sorry it only has six songs so six songs on this album 57 minutes and 17 seconds the longest track clocking in at 12 minutes 15 now that's let's chat about the band first because you know the drill if you've been watching this series for a while anyone brand new welcome now like i said been going since 1991 that's 33 years and are one of the pioneers of funeral doom along with a another band called uh for for go for golfer for golfer I cannot say it for golf fond I think that's how it's pronounced the uh, don't quote me on that but they also have an excellent album that came out in the year of 1994 so a year before this album now with skepticism they got a single out in 1992 called towards my end which now here's an interesting thing about the band. Oh, they had a different vocalist back then, not the one they currently have now. But they, they released a demo in 1994, which I'm not even going to try and pronounce here. Because again, pronunciation skills, not my strong suit. Now there's one thing about this band that You know, you probably picked up on it if you've heard this band. They don't have a bass player. 
it's a four piece so it consists of vocals guitar drums and keyboards and yeah and, I, and it works just like that so leading up from the single and the but that yeah the single on the demo they went in to record their first album which of course there was a little bit of stuff here so if you look here so it was recorded in may of 1995 all music and lyrics by skepticism 1992 to 1995 they did have a session bass player for this album but live they never had a bass player so like I said, this was recorded in May of 1995. I'm not entirely sure when it came out in 1995, but I'm guessing some time after that. Like, I want to say about June, July, maybe even August. Who knows? Now that's... So the members that they have on here, because obviously the vocalists changed from the demo and single... Because the vocalist that they had before that was Tobias Kel Grin, Grin, I think that's how you pronounce it, was only on the Towards My End single. But also, but then they got vocalist Matty, I'm not going to try and say this last name, but he's been in the band as well, so on vocals around the same time as the other one. As um Tobias. So him on vocals and then on keyboards is Eero. I'm not gonna say his last name either. Of course, he's been in the band since day one, and he's in an hour band called Mork. M-O-R-K. Well, no, he's not in the other band. He did guess he did guess keyboards on tracks one and eight on their album. Guitars is Yanni. Of course, been in the band since 1991. Don't think I said his name right. But, uh, I gave it a go. And on drums, again, been in the band since the very since the day it started. Um Lassness. Las 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 um L A double S E. I again pronunciation. Obviously, he's been on every single album since. And he's also in another band called Tuom 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 Da. I think I just said that one. T H R O D A double R. You, you know what I've said already. But yeah, like I said, it consists of six songs. So, and. Every song on this album, I don't know, I can't really pick a favorite because I just love them all. So, starts off with Sign of the Storm. Very good, very good, open, ominous track here. Going into pouring. Every track here, ominous, in the, you know, pretty much ominous in their own way, but it's all got that dark, foreboding sound. And then that goes into. By Silent Wings. Just again another great dark track. And then the rising of the flames that goes into the get go let grow. And then the ever dark green, which is the longest song on here. Like I said, clocking in at 12 minutes and 15 seconds. Now this dark oh, this album is dark, it's ominous, it's, it's ominous, it's heavy, and just just a just a phenomenal album and that word timeless masterpiece because it is. And obviously funeral doom is much slower, much darker and in uh, in mo in pretty much heavier 
because of those dark overtones within the music. And this album has so much of that, you know, their lyrics ranging from nature, sorrow, death, surrealism. And of course, the lyrics on this album all deal with that. So like to read from Sign of the Storm. So like the first bit here, by the healing waters of my lovely shores, I laid the air so bleak, so cold, so very, so very dark. And I think very personal type of lyrics, like, because, you know, Matty is great front man. All, oh, all, oh, just when I saw him at, U, at not UK Death Fest, Film Fest, just it, the stage presence that they had was just. Something out of like a theatrical play. It's very theatrical, you know, but in a very subtle way, not like in your face, like you would get with some of the bigger, like really energetic bands. And it's not, well, it's not meant to be like that. It's meant to be like, you know, very dreary, very eerie, very, and of course, very heavy. And even though the band live lacks a bass player, I know they had a session bass player for this album, but this, but they still make it work with just vocals, guitar, drums, and keyboards, which are all beautifully mixed, by the way, on this album. If you haven't heard it, I do highly recommend it. But those who have heard it back in the day will remember it well. But then it was probably an album that got overlooked quite a bit because obviously there was more albums coming out around that time. Obviously, 1995, the mid-90s, the big black metal movement. But... You know, but there was so much other stuff around that time. Obviously, death metal still there. Got grindcore and obviously doom metal as itself. You know, sludge metal and then folk metal came out. You know, with bands like Sky Clan and so on and so forth. But then going back to doom, you got funeral doom, and it's it. It is what it says what it is on the tin. It's you know, funeral doom, it's dark, it's heavy, it's foreboding, it's eerie. And and this album as well is very somber. Very somber esque album. Well, not somber esque, very somber with that dark, eerie, foreboding overtones on this entire album. You know, this was an album this is one of those albums, I can say, that you can just sit down, you can put it on, you can put the CD, put the CD on, or you spin it on your vinyl, or even on cassette, if you got on cassette. Not sure if it even got a cassette release. And that's one thing to figure out. Um, no, only CD and vinyl and the odd digital release. And I think the one that I got here, the 2021, which is like the original mix one of Stormcrow Fleet. So, very, just, like I said, it's mixed very well, but looking at this one, it says 57 minutes, 31 seconds, even though the one that I'm looking at, the original, says otherwise but i think because the songs were got longer time so some were like one so the rising of the flames that says 11 minutes 28 but when i go on this one it says 11 minutes 31 so many other ones they just added like five ten minutes more to the track like five se seconds more than the track or whatever but 
either way, the songs are still long. They're still... They got that presence in there. And I've mentioned, like, with bands like this, that are, like, even just Doom Metal or Death Doom, it's... I, I think I said this with my, with my Dying Bride, it, you know, their music is always beautiful sounding, but heavy at the same time. Same with Typo Negative, that more gothic sound. This is just straight up dark, like you're walking around the woods and it's dark and walking around, um, like, I don't know, like, you see, you know, just walking in like a empty building or something like, or even walking in like a cathedral and you're hearing this sort of stuff. Because obviously the keyboards sound very much like an organ. And it fits really well with, with the band, with the album, everything that they've done. Of course, they've had the last album they were was Companion from 2021. They haven't done anything since, but I will be seeing them in June with Esoteric and Ahab. So, three amazing funeral doom metal bands in London. Can't wait. Can't wait to see these guys live, because I haven't seen them in four years. Like I said, Finfest, where I saw so many amazing Finnish death metal, death doom, funeral doom metal bands there. Grindcore, you name it. And I love, as well as loving my fast, heavy, in-your-face death metal, thrash metal, black metal, grindcore, you know, punk, hardcore, punk, anything fast and aggressive in your face, I love it. But then I love stuff where it's just like, you got that heaviness of the guitars, the drums, of course the session bass, bass on here as well. I let's get the book out again because his name's on here and I'm not even gonna try and say his name. Where is he? Uh, uh I think it's pronounced Yukka. Yukka, I think. I could be totally wrong on that, so I do apologize for the pronunci pronunciation butchery there. That's a new word. But are we saying for now on? Yeah. Works really well for the album, but obviously live, there's um obviously no bass player. And again, it works. And for this album, even if they didn't have the bass player on it, it's still very effective. A very effective album. And it, it's just one, if you love very slow, heavy music, and you're not familiar with skepticism, check this out. Check this album out. Of course, they are now on Spark Records, which is why this got re-released. Of course, they got more albums after this, so, you know, and once I got those albums, I will discuss them as well, especially ones from, like, like late 90s, early 2000s. But it all started with this, and... Let's see the cover again, but I'm going to flip it like that so the light does not, you know, do that to it. I'm not sure what I'm seeing in the image, but it fits with the music nonetheless. Not entirely sure, but it works. And it is just phenomenal. Beautifully heavy. Dark and eerie, foreboding, but very somber, but still very heavy at the same time. And these guys did a cracking job on this album. And I, you know, it's all mixed and mastered. I didn't even check who did the mix and mastering for this specific record. Oh, it doesn't say on the uh, archives, but. 
But I think thinking about it now, I think the whole band was doing the recording, the mixing and the mastering because they knew what they wanted to put. They knew their sound and it shows on here and on the later albums. Not sure if the later albums had um people doing mixing and mastering. Okay, last one they had someone doing mixing and mastering and recording, but I think for this one they did it themselves on not one hundred percent positive on that. But either way, this sounds fucking awesome. And I love it. And I hope there's more people who are watching this love it as well. And I know I've said this. All you veterans, you're going to know this album. You would have gotten it back in the day. But then a lot of you might, might have been like, oh, I heard Skepticism first time around. Didn't like it. And then went back to him and thought, I wish I liked this back then. But then obviously tastes change over time. Like the amount of bands that I used to listen to, even though I was listening to a mix of like, obviously listening to like, you know, starting with like Maiden and Metallica and Slayer and then getting into like Cannibal Courts while still listening to bands like Slipknot, you know. Tastes change and people like say, oh, I only like the death metal stuff. So this didn't appeal to them. But then like, I actually really like this. And I was like, if there's a veteran out there, like I really like this, and I wish I liked it a bit sooner. But what me at me young back then, being like, it didn't appeal. And you know, stuff I used to listen to doesn't appeal to me anymore. Stuff like this and all the other albums that I have mentioned on this series appeal to me now. If you played me something, you know, all those. Bands that are not anything like this, you know, all that death core stuff, that doesn't appeal to me. Death metal, black metal, thrash metal, grindcore, doom, sludge, folk metal, and then getting back to doom, funeral doom, definitely appeals to me. And so to conclude this entire album, Just to say certain words from it. Dark, heavy, foreboding, foreboding, and, you know, somber is a monumental album of 1995, the mid-90s in general. An absolute pioneer of the funeral doom metal sound. You know, for like the finish... Well, Funeral Doom as a whole, but for like Finland, obviously this these guys and the other band that I just butchered their name, and I'm sorry about that. But as a Funeral Doom metal album, overall, it's got its place like right at the top, in my opinion. Dark, heavy, forebo foreboding, but very somber and elegant. That's a word, elegant as well. And is, of course, a timeless masterpiece. And it will continue to be that. Like I said, I'm not entirely sure when it was released in 1995. But this album's 29 years old. If it was being recorded in May of 95, so it must have been released sometime after it was recorded. So... Around May, maybe a month later, it'll be 29 years old. And then, of course, next year, this album's going to be 30. 30 years old. You know, 30, nearly 30 years of Funeral Doom. You know, 30 years of Funeral Doom mastery right here. I mean, I every song in here I love. And then thinking more about it, the ever dark green, just love it because it's a, and I'll say one of my favorites because it's just an amazing closer to the album. 
and one that you can just relax to, just get yourself a, a beer or whatever you prefer to drink. Stick this on and just chill out. Maybe put like a video on in the background that can um that goes well with the music. So like a you know a video of just nature on repeat. That's what I get from this album, and there's other albums like that as well. But this is one of many, and it puts you in that nature state, you know, state of being in nature and just being totally alone with your thoughts. I know I was going to end on the conclusions, but there's so much more to say because I know I was going to say some more here. So, yeah, it just puts you in that state of mind. Like, you know, like the lyrics are very dark and very, you know, you know, that word depressing. But with the mute, but with the style of music they do, and it, it fits. But then you can listen to it and you can be somewhere like you can just be sat in your favorite spot in in the woods like nature reserve that you go to and just put this on or some or anything like this on and you just feel totally at peace and this this album gives you that. To me, it gives you that. So one more time, conclusion. It's dark, it's heavy. It's foreboding, but it's it's very somber and elegant at the same time. And if and how it's mixed and mastered, and the musicianship on this album, overall amazing album, timeless masterpiece, and definitely, definitely one for anyone brand new to the genre of funeral doom. Skepticism and Storm Crow Fleet. Phenomenal album. Timeless masterpiece. Definitely worth your time. And thank you very much for tuning into this episode of My Metal Vault. Two more on this page for yeah, this side of the page. And then it's on to that big important episode. And I will get closer to who. And closer to the video, I will tell you who my guest is that I got coming on that episode to talk about so we can get our own little, get, you know, review it. He'll review it. I'll review it. So on, so forth. Of course, just giving it away, it will, it's an, you know, well, I haven't given away who the guest is yet, but I had him on last year and of course in due time you'll be on again so thank you very much for tuning in to this episode of my metal vault for anyone brand new welcome and to my welcome to my channel and also this series and to all your newcomers and to everyone who's been watching my videos for a long time like this video Share it around, comment down below what you thought of the album, if you've heard it, you thought of the band, when you saw if you've seen them live or not, or just anything, or even your favorite funeral doom metal bands, put them down below. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with everything that is going on here on my channel. And just to quickly end on this, I will be doing my favorite un underground metal releases but for this video i will be putting either two or three countries in europe and all the bands in those specific countries it'll be out soon it'll be out it'll be out i just gotta get all the albums that i know that are the classics people are gonna them, but still very much awesome underground releases Either way, thank you for tuning in. I've been Jake and Jake's Metal Chat. Do keep that banner of metal held high. And I will see you all in another episode of my Metal Vault.